They walked several hours, making their way deeper into the forest and eventually stopping in a clearing for the night only half a mile away from a huge river. The tree in its center was at least 30 or 50 feet high. Al climbed 15 feet and established a branch on which they could spend the night. Yet, his curiosity drove him further upwards. By the time he reached least 48 feet, he could look out and see the wonderful panorama of that strange island. It was huge. The woods took up a good bit of it, but at least a third appeared to be grasslands. The buildings in the distance gave him hope that there were people living here. But then he took a closer look. He saw greenish colors on the buildings, vines creeping through broken windows, and the huge beaks and giraffe-like necks of flying giants. If there was a city over there, it was probably, understandably, uninhabited. He had brought up some tools, and they hauled up some old planks, so that he could make a place for them all to sleep in without falling down. They then hauled up Mary and Mike, since they couldn't really climb very well. Barry and Anne came up first, and Sam Evan and Michael. He tried not to look down. In a brief conversation, everyone started to argue and panic that no one would ever find and rescue them. But that was when Alvin silenced them, and all, and reminded them all to have faith and hope. And what will we do until then? Mike said. Complaint. Build a tree house and crash there? Exactly, said Al. When all was said and done, they prayed to God to protect them during the night and went to sleep. Or at least they tried. Beautiful and terrifying as it was, the ambience of the wood was just so loud. None were worse than the currently mating pair of Tyrannosaurus, only a mile or two away. Semi painfully remarking that they would go on like this for a few days, for weeks.